During the Soviet era, this is where the communist elite liked to holiday, Lake Isikush in the mountains in northeastern Kyrgyzstan. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, the country was keen to reinvent itself as the Switzerland of Central Asia. But the tide of investors and visitors Kyrgyzstan was expecting failed to materialize, and the country is now impoverished, especially in the mountainous regions. Until a few years ago, there were tall trees outside 73-year-old Sadantkan Amanatova's house in the mountain village of Saru. But she had no choice but to chop them down. She desperately needed firewood. I needed the wood to heat. But even though I had three really big trees felled, there was only enough wood to see me through two winters. It was very cold. My pension isn't enough to buy all the coal I need. But now, at no expense, she's having a new stove built, which stores heat more efficiently and requires less fuel. She has Ula Kokoev to thank for it. He works for the Central Asian Mountain Partnership, a local NGO. Its goal is to contribute to the improvement of people's livelihoods in the mountain villages of Kyrgyzstan by encouraging a more sustainable use of natural resources. With standard stoves, a family burns up about four tons of coal per winter. But the energy-efficient stoves reduce this by about half, and that cuts pollutant emission by about half too. So with each stove we install, we're helping protect the environment. Locals in the village of Saru depend on farming for their livelihoods. The village's main problem is the price of energy, which rises every year. These days, it eats up about 50% of their modest family budgets. That's why Ula Kokoev's aid organization organizes seminars for local craftsmen, who spend two weeks learning how to build the new energy-saving stoves. What they learn benefits the entire population. We give poor people all the stoves built during the course. We want them to see how much money they can save with the new stoves. Local village authorities help us identify the neediest families. The workshops are free of charge for the participants. The aid organization even covers the cost of food and accommodation. The workshops offer the men an opportunity to gain new skills. I'm learning this for a reason. I plan to build these stoves in my village. People have to be convinced that they need these stoves. They can't afford to keep buying coal. I'd like to see more of these in my country. Classes are given on the principles of energy saving and the concept behind the stoves, which were originally designed in Germany. The participants are also taught how to insulate their homes. These are issues that people here are only just starting to talk about. Here in Kyrgyzstan, people have a different mentality. But we're starting to understand, and we're interested in learning about new ways to heat. I'm sure this project has a future here. Ula's organization has also established a local micro-loan network that allows even more families to replace their old stoves. Villager Nuruilia Abdikadirova was trained by the Central Asian Mountain Partnership and now works as an advisor at the credit agency in Saru. When her neighbors apply for a micro-loan, she can help with the paperwork. The monthly interest rate is 2%. Families usually pay back the loan within six months. We calculated how much a stove costs, and it's between 10,000 and 11,000 Kyrgyz som. 
That's about 200 euros, for many villagers, a month's income. The Kermanov family would like to take out a loan. Since a ton of coal costs 100 euros, their investment will have paid off after just one winter. After the meeting, seminar leader Ula Kokoev heads off to the neighboring village, which is a good 60 kilometers away. He led a course here last year. Back then, two stoves were donated to 65-year-old widow Alia Gulyai, one for cooking and one for heating. Ula tells us that the reason why Kyrgyzstan and other former Soviet republics are only now starting to think about energy matters is closely tied to their history. In the Soviet era, people just filled out a form or went to the collective director and said they needed more coal. Then they'd get it, usually at no expense. So in the past, people were provided with coal by the Communist Party. Those days are long gone, but thanks to the new stoves, people are starting to save money on fuel. They're also a lot warmer in winter. More and more villagers are realizing that this concept makes sense. 